please rise out of respect for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord, beginning with verse 11. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of a mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier that was carrying him that was carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. The great, a great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> One day there was a Bible study group meeting, and the leader led them into a conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, a conversation about sudden death. And they talked about how we're never really prepared for sudden death or for death in any way, whether it's a death that you know is going to happen or a sudden death. We think we're prepared, we kid ourselves into thinking we're prepared, but we're really never prepared for death. As that conversation went on, the leader then challenged the group and he said, okay, if you knew that you had four weeks to live, you only had four weeks to live. What would you do with that four weeks? Well, there was silence in the room, and finally a man in the back raised his hand, and he said, if I had four weeks to live, I would go out into the community, and I would share the love of Christ through word and action so that more and more people would become disciples of Christ. And of course, everyone in the room nodded and thought that was a worthy thing to do. Then a woman up in front raised her hand, and when called on, she said, If I only had four weeks to live, I would dedicate my life to serving the Lord, my church, my family, and my fellow man. And of course, everyone nodded and thought that was a worthy way to spend the last four weeks of your life. Then it was quiet for a little bit, and finally a man in the back raised his hand, and when called on, he said in a very loud voice, if I only had four weeks left to live, I'd move in with my mother-in-law. Everyone sat there for a few minutes and kind of wondered. They were a little confused about it. Finally, the leader said, well, can you tell us, sir, why if you only had four weeks left to live, would you move in with your mother-in-law? And he said, because if I only had four weeks to live and I moved in with my mother-in-law, it'd be the longest four weeks of my life. <laughs> A little humor, huh? Sometimes we can use a little humor to help us cope with a subject that brings so much suffering and pain and sorrow and grief. Death and dying, they're tough subjects to deal with. So sometimes we find a little humor just helps soften that a little bit, helps us cope a little better. That's what we see in the gospel lesson for today. Loss, suffering, grief, as the widow from Nain loses her son, her only son. Now we can speculate whether she has other children or not, but what we know for sure is she had one son, and she lost her only son. He died. And with that death comes a great deal of loss, not just the loss of her son, which of course is, is awful enough, but she also loses the hope for a future with a family, a family to take care of her. There will be no grandchildren, there's no daughter-in-law, there's no one to care for her in her old age. She's probably going to be penniless with no way to earn an income. She is an outcast, if you will, in society. You might say she's lost all hope for the future and possibly a reason to live. Now sometimes, when we hear stories like this from the Bible or in the world around us, sometimes it's hard to relate. 
If we haven't experienced the same kind of loss, it's hard to relate. It's hard to connect to the gospel reading. Some of us, unfortunately, have lost children. But many of us have not. And we praise God for that, but at the same time, it's hard for us to really connect and to really understand the level of pain and suffering. But the truth is, as a congregation, as a family here at Grace Lutheran, we have walked this path with one of our own. We have experienced the pain and suffering of tragic death in one of our own members. I have received her permission to bring the story back to us to remind us once again, and in so doing, to help us connect with the gospel reading and the level of suffering and pain found there by this widow who has lost her only son. It was five years ago on a March evening, and I was home in my office on my home computer working on a sermon, and my phone rang, and it was a member of this congregation in a very emotional but controlled voice said, get over to Pat Moon's. Her son is dead. Pat was a member of this congregation, and she had a son, her only son, Nate. And Nate died in a plane crash right over the Michigan border late that afternoon. By the time I got over to Pat's, which wasn't long because she lived right behind me, I walked into a level of pain and suffering that I have never in 23 years in ministry experienced before or since. I've been with people at the hospital. I've been at the funeral home. I've been in the cemetery. I have walked with families through times of loss and grief, but I have never experienced that level of pain and suffering that I did that evening when I walked into Pat's house. There were people there trying to comfort her, and when I walked in, she ran to me. We hugged, and we both crumpled to the floor in tears. The level of grief was overwhelming. And over the hours to come, Pat choked out through her sobs what she saw as her new reality. She was alone. She was alone in the world. You see, Pat wasn't married. Nate had never married. There would be no daughter-in-law. There would be no grandchildren. There would be no one to take care of her in her old age. She choked out that she was alone in the world and had lost all hope for the future. And yes, Pat even saw that she had no reason to live. Her reason to live died that afternoon. We all tried to comfort her, didn't we? Do you remember? Do you remember how we all surrounded Pat and tried to comfort and love and care for her? But no words, no actions were going to make it any better. She had lost her son, her only son, her reason to live. That's how the woman in the reading for today, who has lost her only son, feels. Can you remember? Can you remember that we walked that path with Pat? Do you feel the feelings that we felt as a congregation at that time? That's how the woman in the gospel lesson for today felt. She had lost her only son. And as she walks next to him, on the way to the cemetery where he will be buried, she walks next to her dead son. She is sobbing and grieving, and she doesn't know how she's going to go on without her son, her only son. Can you see her? Can you see her in your mind's eye? Can you connect with the gospel reading? Can you connect with that level of pain and suffering? Jesus did. Jesus saw her. Jesus' heart broke for this woman. Jesus came into her pain, into her suffering. He stepped into her tragedy, and he did the unthinkable. He touched the dead body of her son, and in so doing makes himself unclean. Jesus steps into and touches death in order to bring life. 
Jesus says to the boy, get up, get up. And he gets up and Jesus returns him to his mother. Because Jesus is willing to touch death, hope is restored. Life is restored. Not just the life of this boy, but the mother's life as well. Hope is restored. Life is restored. Jesus steps into the pain and the suffering and brings life and hope. When have you felt like all is lost? When have you felt like there was no hope for a future, no reason to go on? When have you felt like your reason to live was gone? Some of us have lost children. For some of us, it could be the loss of a spouse or another loved one. But this kind of tragic loss comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. It could be the loss of your health due to illness, that illness that is robbing your body of its strength, it could be the loss of control over your daily life because aging and illness is taking a toll on your body and you're no longer able to do what you once could do and now you're dependent on other people. It could be the loss of hope for a future through divorce. It could be the loss of innocence because of abuse. Over and over and over, tragic loss comes into our lives. And that very loss can make us think there is no hope for a future, no reason to live, and we don't know how we're going to go on. Remember Jesus. Remember the woman who lost her son. Jesus stepped into her pain and suffering. Jesus touched her tragedy. He touched death and brought life. And Jesus steps into our times of tragedy as well. Jesus steps into our desperate moments when it seems like all is lost and there's no hope. Jesus comes to us. When our hearts break, his heart breaks. When we shed tears, he sheds tears. And he steps into our pain and our suffering and he brings life and hope. He comes to us through his word. Be in the word. You will find healing and comfort there. Be in the word and then know that he comes to us through his people. Every time I'm at the hospital, the funeral home, working with a family, I always pray that they know Christ is coming to them through the people. Christ works through his people. Every person that comes to share a hug, a tear, just showing up, is Christ coming. Every doctor, every nurse, every technician, every funeral director, everyone who comes with food, comfort, love, look in their eyes. That is Christ coming to you because Christ works through his people. He will never leave us, never forsake us in our time of suffering. He comes over and over and over he will come. And then, the challenge for the church, be that comfort. Be that person who shows up. Be that person who takes Christ into that tragedy. Be that person who comes. Share a hug. Cry with them. Pray with them. And if words are necessary, 
Trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give us everything we need. The Spirit is the power of God in us who works through us and will provide every word, every action, everything we need. Just show up. Don't be afraid to step into somebody else's pain and suffering. Don't be afraid to touch death in order to bring life. Don't be afraid of somebody's pain. Step into it and bring hope. Hope for a future. Hope for life. That's the challenge for the church. Here's the good news, and we could use some good news, couldn't we? Here's the good news. Pat's married now. She lives in Florida. And through her marriage, she has stepchildren and step-grandchildren. Is it the same? No. No. Does she still grieve for and ache and long to have her son back here on earth? Yeah, she does. She does. But if Pat was standing here today, she would tell you that she knows with all certainty that Christ walked with her through those days and weeks and months and years. Christ walked with her and provided for her and comforted her through her people, through his people, through us. We took Christ into her pain and suffering. And she knows that without a doubt. And she knows that this separation from her son is only for a season. The day will come when she will be reunited with him when the kingdom comes in its fullness or she goes to heaven. She will see her son again. And that good news is our good news. Because as people of God, we know on this earth we're going to suffer. You can take that to the bank. We are going to suffer because we live in a broken world. But he will be with us in our suffering. And whether the day comes that Christ comes again or we live, leave this earth to go to heaven and meet him there, the day will come when all evil, pain, suffering, heartache will be gone. Why? Because Christ was willing to touch and experience death in order to bring life. And so, may all the people of God say what we hear in verse 16 with conviction. God has come to help his people. Thanks be to God. Please rise and join together for the hymn of the day, number 559, verses 1 through 3.